Welcome to Living Hope. In today's message, The Alpha and Omega, Dr. Peter McLuhan teaches on the final saying of Jesus in the Bible. Tabasim was born in England in 1971 to Pakistani parents who raised her to follow Islam. Tabasim, who goes by the English name of Tabby, was sent to Quranic school when she was just seven years old. And although she spoke Punjabi at home with her parents, she was educated in the British system to speak English. And now at the age of seven, she was instructed by an English-speaking imam to read the Quran in Arabic. She was surprised that she was not taught what the Arabic words meant. The only thing that she was taught to do was to read the Quran in Arabic without understanding a single word that she said. I've come to understand this is a very common practice in many non-Arabic speaking Muslim countries. And now after five years of instruction, at the young age of 11, she was able to read the entire Quran in Arabic without understanding a single thing that she was saying. Now this accomplishment was a source of great joy and pride for her parents, and they threw for her a a family party called an Amin for people who are able to read the Quran in Arabic. And even though Tabby's parents were proud of her, the party did not mean anything to her because she had no idea what she was saying or reciting. Now her English speaking imam taught her not to ask any questions at all. He did not explain anything about the history of Muhammad. He did not explain anything about Islam or the Quran. He said, all you need to do is to know how to read and recite the Quran in Arabic. Now, shortly after learning to read the Quran in Arabic, uh, Tabby stopped attending the mosque in the Quranic school. She completed her high school education and went on to college. When Tabby turned 33, her parents felt like she was drifting from her Islamic roots. And they believed that the best thing that they could do for their daughter was to take her on a pilgrimage to Mecca. Tabby remembers her mother saying, when you first see Mecca, you will have a spiritual experience. And so they landed at the airport, were driven by a taxi to the city of Mecca. And when she first saw Mecca, she did indeed have a spiritual experience but it was not what she was expecting. As soon as Tabby saw the great mosque surrounding the Kaaba stone, she heard an audible voice speak to her. The voice said, I am the Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end. The voice repeated these words to her over and over and over and over again. No one else in the taxi heard that voice except Tabby. Because the voice spoke to her in English, she knew that the message was not from Allah or from the Quran because she was taught that God only spoke Arabic. She went on with her parents to do all the rituals that they asked her to do, running back and forth between Safa and Marwa and encircling the Kaaba stone seven times and all the other things that good Muslims are asked to do. She asked her parents many questions, but none of their answers satisfied her curiosity. She was told to stop asking questions and do simply what she was told to do. And so she left Mecca without the experience that she was anticipating And she came home with more questions than she had before she left. Now, because Tabitha knew some Greek words, she knew that alpha was the first letter of the Greek alphabet. She did not know what omega meant 
except that the voice said, I am the beginning, I am the end. After returning from Mecca, she stopped thinking about the voice that she heard. She continued pursuing her career that interested her very much, and she was living a Western lifestyle more and more as time went by. When she turned 35, for the first time in her life, she found an English Quran. She picked it up and she began to read it. She found out it was difficult to read, it didn't make any sense, and she was confused by what she read. It just made no sense to her. There are whole sections of the Quran that actually make very little sense. That week, she also learned from her mother about Muhammad's first wife, or youngest wife. She was six years old when he married her. That disturbed her very much. She began crying out, who are you, God? And asking for an answer. One week, one week later, Tabby had a very unusual dream. In her dream, she saw what appeared to be the end of the earth. Fireballs were falling like meteors all around her. People were running out of their home in Brighton where she lived and headed to the beach. And in her dream, she saw a man standing on the beach preaching. And the man said, please, please, don't die without having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Her dream ended. And she continued on for another 10 years with having questions about life, but not having answered. At age 46, she needed to move for a set of circumstances that came into her life. And her new flat was directly opposite a very small evangelical church in the town of Brighton. And as she walked past the church, the pastor was standing in front of it. He greeted her warmly, and he said, you're new in the neighborhood. Uh, welcome. We're so glad that you are our neighbor. Now, the pastor seemed like a warm and a likable fella, so she decided that for the very first time, she would visit a church that next Sunday. As soon as she walked into the building, she felt a presence I just want you to know many people have said that to me. When they walk in this building, they feel a presence. This is why we work hard at learning to steward the presence of God. People have seen angels in this building, particularly up in that corner. You see an angel today in that corner, you'll be a very blessed person. So she had never felt a presence like she felt when she walked into that church. She certainly didn't experience it in Mecca. People welcomed her with smiles and made her feel at home. She heard the gospel, the good news about Jesus, that for the very first time she heard that Jesus took on the form of humanity. He became the word of God, the living word of God. She loved the songs that the people sang. In one of the songs, an old hymn those who've been in church a while will know it well. It's called, How Great Thou Art. And one night as the congregation sang that song, the Holy Spirit uh, began to speak to her. It was in the singing of the third stanza that speaks about the second coming of Jesus. It goes like this. When Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my soul. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Yes, as the people sang, a light went on in her head and she had another spiritual experience. She realized that Jesus is the way to heaven. And more than anything else, Tabby wanted the assurance of knowing that when she died, she would go to heaven. Later that evening, she shared with her pastor and his wife about the voice she heard when she was in that taxi on the way to Mecca. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the first and the last. Her pastor said, let me show you 
where these words are found in the Bible. He helped Tabby turn in her Bible to Revelation chapter 22, and they began to read, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 13. Tabby was stunned. She asked her pastor, do you mean that the voice I heard in Mecca was the voice of Jesus? And her pastor said, if those are the words you heard, then that is what Jesus said at the end of the book of Revelation. Without anyone needing to say anything to her, Tabby understood that Jesus is indeed the Son of God, not in a physical sense, but as the Word of God. He became the Word of God. He was the one who was in the beginning with God. He is the one God sent to reveal the Father's heart. He is the one who paid for our sins to be forgiven. He is the one who's coming back at the end of the age to take the followers of Jesus to heaven. Not only is Jesus the Alpha, the one who was in the beginning, he is also the Omega, the one who's coming at the end of the age to take his followers to heaven. Tabby immediately received Jesus as her savior and asked her pastor if she could be baptized as soon as possible and demonstrate her faith in Jesus publicly. The next week she was baptized Today, Tabitha is walking with the Lord and the Holy Spirit, who through another dream gave her great boldness to share her story with people. She tells how Jesus spoke to her and how he saved her from her sin and has given her the assurance that she will be in heaven. As the Lord is patient with Tabby, He will be patient with you. For more than 13 years, gently, kindly, lovingly, Jesus revealed himself to Tabby until he trusted her for salvation. He's been patient with me, and he will be patient with you. Perhaps like Tabby, you too have heard a voice speaking to you. Perhaps as you're listening, you're hearing not just my voice, but you're hearing another voice. Perhaps today you've understood that the voice who is speaking to you is indeed the voice of Jesus. We invite you to follow him by accepting the pleading of the preacher on the beach. Please do not die without having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now what can we learn from this message that Tabby heard. Well, let's hear it again. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the first and the last. I am the beginning and the end. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 13. We learn that Jesus is alive. The grave could not hold him. The grave could not hold his earthly body and he is as alive today as he was in the very beginning of time. We learn that Jesus speaks our language. We learn that Jesus existed in the form of humanity, uh, pre-existed coming to earth. He existed before he became a human being as a babe in Bethlehem. Jesus became the word of God as a human being. We learn that this final saying of Jesus connects Jesus with the words of prophet Isaiah who wrote about the Lord God in the Old Testament. Jesus, uh, Isaiah, referred to the one who was the first and the last on no less than three occasions. Isaiah chapter 41 and verse four. Who has performed this And who has done this, calling generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, the first and the last, I am he. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I am the first and the last. And besides me, there is no other God. Isaiah chapter 44 
and verse six. Listen to me, I am he, I am the first, and I am the last. Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 12. What a great message to hear at the end of this year and at the beginning of 2024. I testify to you today that the Lord has been with me from the first day of this year to the last day, to this very day today. He will be with you from the first day of 2024 tomorrow and to the very last day of 2024. He knows every problem we will face and he will help us overcome every problem that we will face. He will wait for us to discover just how much he loves us and wants to help us with the challenges we face in life. Now, not only did Jesus, was Jesus at the beginning and the end, he will be with us in every transition that we face. Some of us will face some transitions this year that we didn't anticipate. And many of us faced transitions last year that we didn't see coming. Aren't you so glad there's nothing that God never sees coming? And Jesus is here to help us with what we never saw coming. Jesus went on to say, I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright and morning star, Revelation chapter 22 and verse 16. The first words of the Bible begin this way. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth the most powerful philosophic statement ever made. It answers the great questions of metaphysics and life. It ends with Jesus saying, he was in the beginning with God, and in the end he will bring all the followers into the presence of God. The last chapter of the Bible, Jesus says three times, behold, I am coming quickly, Revelation chapter 22 and verse 7, verse 12, and verse 20. Behold, I am coming quickly. Jesus is coming sooner than you anticipate. You can't put it off. It's not that he's coming. He's delaying long. He's coming sooner than you anticipate. Are you ready for the second coming of Jesus? Life has many stories that we tell in words, but Jesus is the beginning and the end of every story in our life. In Jesus, we find everything that helps us discover the meaning to life. If God has opened your eyes today to see that Jesus has power to help you overcome every challenge that you and I will face, we invite you today to receive him as your savior. Jesus is the solution to the troubles and fears that you are facing. Ask Jesus to forgive you for your sins and make you his child. Come Holy Spirit, fill every person, heal every person who is praying with me right now. If you just prayed to receive Jesus, write to me and tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. Father, we thank you for Jesus, our Alpha and Omega. We trust you, God, for all the beginnings and endings in our lives. Work out your will in us through this coming year. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you.
and fill you with living hope.